I spent most of my day in the hatch because this wire on the autopilot burned out. It is undersized for the 10 amp load uh, that it has and it was factory supplied. I replaced it with another wire that was factory supplied because I had a spare wheel pilot anticipating autopilot problems on this passage. Uh, but you know, it's kind of classic. The, all the consumer electronics that I, I ever install, they always supply undersized wiring and then they tell you to oversize all the wiring you do. But what's going to fail, it's going to fail is the stuff that's supplied by the manufacturer. These wires burned out on the autopilot on the 14th day. Much harder than it looks. <laughs> we soon got the autopilot working and would not have to hand steer for another 12 days. We started hitting more squalls, but they were pretty weak. try the asymmetrical spinnaker uh, we've got 10 knots of breeze uh, we prefer 11 12 13 uh, in terms of boat speed uh, with our current rig with full main full Genoa so maybe if we get this drifter uh, up this asymmetrical spinnaker up we might uh, do a bit better Hoisting the spinnaker is always a time-consuming job. First you have to go to the bow, and before you can deploy the spinnaker, you have to sort through the tangle of sheets, halyards, and sock control lines. Okay, so we're trying out the asymmetrical spinnaker, see if it's better than uh, having the main up. We're using the boom as the pole for the asymmetrical spinnaker so it has a little bit better shape and it kind of uh, wings out a bit more than it otherwise would. Uh, so far it looks like it's about the same area as the main, so I'm kind of skeptical it's going to be a lot better. we got three sails going right now and about nine knots of breeze, and we're going about five knots, something like that, maybe a little less when the breeze drops down to seven. Sunglasses on the We're doing is, uh, we got three sails going. We're gonna drop the main pretty soon. And uh, once we drop the main, uh, then we'll test it. It's much better uh, without the main. Uh, it's not clear to me that the, it's better because it seems like the asymmetrical spinnaker is not going to hold its shape as well. And uh, it's also not that much bigger than the main, if it's bigger at all. Kind of floppy. 
All right, so we got the asymmetrical spinnaker up and flying. It seems to be actually slower than the main, and it definitely was slower than the, the main and asymmetrical up. So we'll probably douse it pretty quick. So I think there's a big debate among the cruising community what's better, two head sails or a, uh, a main and a head sail pulled out. And uh, this may not settle the debate, but it will certainly extend it. I think most people uh, are inclined to say and having two head sails is the way to go at downwind sailing on the coconut milk run. After trying the spinnaker on the starboard side to leeward, we decided to pull it out to windward and then raise the main. Okay, so we've got the asymmetric spinnaker pulled out where the Genoa was, and that seems kind of better, a little bit better than the our best rig, which we thought was the mainsail, and that the Genoa pulled out to windward. Uh, it, it seems like the asymmetrical spinnaker kind of catches the wind a bit better does better with our pole which is a little bit short and it just kind of holds its shape better than the pulled out general. Asymmetric spinnaker to windward and that seems to work the best. It really likes the pole. It seems to hold its shape a lot better than the Genoa. All three sail combinations seem to have similar performance but on a more dead down wind track, probably the double head sail rig is more convenient because you don't have main sail jibes. The safest arrangement is the main with the Genoa pulled out, and that's because you can easily reef the sails. Whereas if you hit a squall with the asymmetric spinnaker up, then you can get a little bit out of control. So it's day 17. The time has uh, changed so much uh, that the uh, my watch, my 6 to 9 p.m. watch, no longer has the sunset. The sunset is in Sahia's 9 to 12 p.m. watch. We're now basically in California time in terms of the sunset. All right, so we flipped the wing and wing. This was a unwelcome development that we got around 3 a.m. that the wind had shifted so far uh, to the north that the main got very angry at us and would not get happy until it was put on the other side uh, and so we did that but uh, too bad my back flare-ups I, I kind of strained my back about five days ago with the a bigger than usual wave while I was leaning over and that kind of flared up uh, last night and then this afternoon when I was trying to do the jibe. Uh, it was kind of, it's kind of a long process. You got to get the guys uh, all on the other side. You got to get the 
the preventer block and lines all on the other side. Got to get the pole on the other side. Of course, get the sails on the other side. That's kind of the easy part. Uh, took a long time. Took a few breaks because it was so early in the morning. Also took a nap. So, <laughs> but now we're sailing well finally after kind of muddling along at three to four knots with an incomplete uh, dive of the sails. And uh, now we're probably making closer to five to six. I've been using hand soap to wash my uh, stuff. Uh, I don't think my wife would approve of that. Uh, some of our other crew members just been using just regular bar soap uh, to, to wash, but the hand soap kind of smells good. So even if you didn't get it super clean, at least it smells nice. For most of this trip, we've been water rationing, and uh, we just kind of lifted the water rations because it looked like, for most of the water rationing, uh, because it looked like we had too much water. And we, no very low chance that we could run out of water based on all the different tanks we have uh, but uh, we had two liters uh, for washing showering and washing our clothes per day and uh, I used one liter of the two liter bottle for my clothes and one uh, liter for a very light quote shower uh, but you know we've lifted that so if you do use like a bottle, you can measure your usage very easily. Uh, and you can do it on, on a very low amount. I, like I said, it's about a liter that I've used. And I've been able to keep up with my washing the whole trip. So uh, we've been using the pulled out Genoa and the uh, main with Preventer. And, you know, one thing that became clear about the downside of this setup is that if you have a wind shift that you're going to have to jibe and the jibe takes time. Right? You want to jibe the pole, you want to jibe the preventer. The, you know, a setup that may be better in terms of kind of wind shifts, whether it's uh, to the port or starboard side, uh, would be wing and wing with two poles. But we only have one pole, uh, and you could go wing and wing with one pole, but it would have the same problem uh, that you have with the uh, the current setup is that you would have to jibe the pole, which might be okay. You know, you have the the head sail on one side and the head sail on the other side, and all you do is jibe the pole. It might be okay benefits of this setup is the the ease of reefing so in theory you should be able to reef both the Genoa and the main uh, from the cockpit. Angle pole setup is and uh, with the main is that the main is probably going to be the first uh, one of your sails that's going to get back winded because it's it's uh, it's going to tend to be forward, so your pole is going to be tend to be uh, facing uh, forward, whereas your 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 main boom is going to be facing backwards. So the main boom has to be behind the spreaders, and the pole needs to be in front of the spreaders. So the main boom is the first angle that the wind can wrap around, and once the wind wraps around consistently behind the main. Uh, then it's the the downwind rig is going to be uncomfortable and not very efficient. So if you've got uh, the wind as it is uh, some sometimes here, wrapping behind the main, then uh, the uh, you're going to want to start thinking about jiving the main as we're we should start thinking about it. Uh, so if you jive to the other side then it maybe it won't wrap around but it really depends on how much your wind angle is changing which is a function of how straight a course you're steering in this case the autopilot steering and uh, you know the wave action so you know you may be varying 20 degrees 
each side. And if your main's not uh, 20 degrees from center, then uh, it's going to get caught pr pretty much on either side, even if the wind is dead in the middle. So, you know, there there are certain wind angles uh, where, and certain uh, variants of, of how straight a course uh, your boat keeps within the short term, uh, which could make the rig inefficient with the wind wrapping around it, uh, wanting to jive the main. Now the main's not jiving because we have a preventer, so you definitely, uh, for downwind sailing, offshore, you must use the preventer. It's Christmas Eve. Uh, it looks like our gas stores are going down, so one thing I probably should have done in Ecuador was refill the gas. But we'll make it. Uh, we got lots of stuff that's pre-cooked. Almost everything is pre-cooked. The forecast is for squalls for the next couple days. And so we've diverted our course uh, to go to due west for the next couple days until the end of Tuesday. And then we turn directly towards Hiva Oa. Uh, we are seven nights of the way there, and uh, we uh, have about 750 miles to go. So as you can see, we're on the red on the canister. Uh, the other canister is completely out, and I switched to this canister. So it's looking bad here on Christmas Eve uh, that we might run out of cooking gas before we hit Hivoa. So, you know, we diverted a little bit. I think it's taken us 10 miles out of the way. Uh, but the reason was not just the squalls, which is hard on the crew in terms of sail changes, uh, and especially hard on me since I've been having back problems. Uh, kind of a rogue wave, if you want to call it that, kind of surprised me, kind of jolted my back, and ever since that, uh, it's been a little bit tender. So the sail change is not really good, uh, and the other thing is that the squalls seem to bring with them periods of calm, and that's really bad if you're trying to make uh, miles under sail. So those that inconsistency. Uh, is worse than a consistent 10 or 11 knots, uh, a 5 to 20 knots, not, not so hot. We started about key, the longitude of Key Largo in Ecuador on the Santa Elena Peninsula. Three weeks ago, we started about two weeks ago, we passed the Galapagos to the south. We kept on going. And right now, we're about right here at 126 west. And you can see on the edge of the screen, over here are the Marquesas and Hiva Oa. Today, we're pretty much on the longitude of say San Francisco uh, and to get to Hiva Oa we have to get on the longitude out into the Pacific Ocean further west than the continental US so uh, we're really traversing a distance uh, east-west wider than that of the continental US. So where the topping lift uh, is attached now there used to be that ring uh, now the fore guy and the after guy are just attached to the topping lift sh shackle. All right, day 21, still wing and wing. We've got the wind uh, to the north, so we got the Genoa pulled out uh, towards the north or the starboard side. We're hoping that the wind's going to stay north. It's uh, Christmas Eve, which I was celebrating with Janet and Sophie, uh, but uh, glad that we're making way nicely. Uh, we diverted for squalls yesterday, 
uh, slightly uh, to stay uh, not getting any further south. Uh, we got a, a light squall in the morning today, Christmas Eve, and uh, there are more squalls that seem to be to the south of us, so we may see uh, another squall before we're done. But so far, the wind's been fairly steady uh, instead of the calms and squalls that we had the other day. So what day is it, Ben? It's Christmas Day, 25th of December. What's that in front of us? The rainbow. Woohoo! A little present this morning. All right, here's the pie that me and Ben made. Uh, day 22, Christmas Day. Uh, the kind of had a slow night last night, kind of light winds had to motor uh, much of the night. Uh, today we've got a nice brisk wind. Uh, I have kind of excess fuel so I'm trying to, to burn the fuel because it's, I don't want to store uh, diesel in Atuona and once we haul out I won't be able to burn it. Um, I had kind of a I had to work when I was in Ecuador uh, to give away my extra fuel and that was just a hassle. Uh, but you know we also want to get there more quickly so we're kind of looking at trying to uh, you know find the spots uh, in the trip when the winds are light say in the seven knot range and uh, motor through that. Uh, just to take advantage of our excess fuel. Okay, so this brand new water maker, uh, I tested it actually on the Christmas morning uh, on my night watch and uh, didn't take pictures too dark, but uh, it didn't do that great. Uh, this life raft water maker, brand new. Life raft water maker that I bought new just a few weeks ago, uh, it its first test did not go well. Uh, it uh, it did seem to produce output water a little faster than advertised, about eight gallons per hour versus six. That was the good, but the bad was that it was producing output water that was uh, 650 to 950 parts per million, which is well over the the maximum uh, saltiness or parts per million uh, threshold of 400 to 500 for drinking water. So if you had that on your life raft, you, you might get a little bit dehydrated from that. Uh, it didn't take, I, I used the TDS meters uh, for the uh, water maker output water, uh, but uh, I also tasted it. It tasted kind of not good at all and uh, maybe a little plasticky so maybe if I run it I ran it for 12 minutes after it produced its first output water maybe if I ran it for a half hour maybe it flush out some nastiness in the system and uh, be a bit better I hope so uh, I'm getting kind of tired of having catadine water makers uh, that do not perform as advertised and so this would be the third water maker I've owned although the first new one uh, that did not uh, do as advertised. So we have uh, high hopes uh, to make it to Hivo in five days. It's the uh, 22nd day of the trip, December 25th, Christmas Day. And uh, we're sailing pretty well right now. So it's looking good. We are 80% done with the trip uh, and about 600 miles to go. Hivoa. It's Monday, 26th of December. We are four days away from Hivaoa. Kind of trough in front of us, uh, going through the Marquesas, but thankfully it's in front of us, and then it's going to move west faster than we can get move west, so we probably won't see it. And we should have good weather coming in the Marquesas. The Marquesas have their own weather uh, compared to this very peaceful Pacific passage called the Pacific Puddle Jump.
I preemptively changed the engine's fuel filter, but I had bleeding problems until I replaced the entire secondary filter housing with the spare. What sail do we have up in the squall? We've got the asymmetrical symmetry. Yeah, yeah, spinnaker. There we go. <laughs> Nice. How many miles from Hilo are we? 220. Woohoo! Okay, so it's day 25, two days out uh, from Hivoa, but you know, the last uh, two days have been challenging for me because uh, I did a preemptive uh, fuel filter change and the engine has died four times because of air bleeding issues. I've never really had any air bleeding issues with this engine before. But evidently something I did wrong during that uh, fuel filter element change uh, led to some air bleeding issues and I, my last three attempts to, uh, three or four attempts to correct it have not succeeded. I've got more things I can try, but uh, that's a bit disappointing, and so we're not able to motor through this present squall, which led to a wind shift. You know, one of the things was I hoisted the ASIM uh, today because so we could go wing and wing with both Genoa and ASIM. Uh, that was a good idea at the time, but now in the squall with the wind shift, uh, the ASIM is not doing so well, uh, beam reaching or uh, close reaching. So with the flogging, it looks like we're going to have to drop the ASIM and, and uh, raise the Genoa again. Uh, but it's just such a depressing thing because these are just multi-hour tasks. Just went through uh, the fourth squall uh, since We've been within uh, two days of the Marquesas. Uh, these squalls have been kind of moderate, uh, so the gusts in the 20 knot range, uh, and really the boat is going very fast, uh, faster than I thought she could go. And uh, we've had uh, the Jenniker up, which I'm sitting on right now, and the last squall. Uh, I decided to take down the Jenniker uh, instead of just scandalizing it. And it would not come down. Uh, I wanted to use the sock. The sock would not work. Uh, and the, the halyard would not come down. The halyard was in a cam cleat and I had to take a hammer to the cam cleat to get it down. Uh, and that took several attempts and I got a pretty bad or uh, a rope burn uh, on my finger trying to control its descent uh, and I just let it run. So here's the hammer I used to open up the cam cleat that was holding up the uh, spinnaker halyard. as much sail up, the winds are higher, and we're in danger of getting to the Marquesas too early. So we are going to uh, slow it down today, our last full day at sea. Day of passage. Another thing that's been dominating my time for the last two days is the engine work. The, uh, the gauge, the fuel, the fuel filter gauge said that uh, the fuel was dirty, 
uh, and so even though we were before our required interval, I decided to change the fuel filter elements for the primary and secondary filters. But uh, I must have not properly bled, and there must be some source of air in the system where I didn't seal it up well, and uh, I've had to bleed four times more after the engine has stalled over the last, I don't know, uh, 25 engine hours. And that, that has been, you know, dominating my time in addition to the sail changes, because we put up the sock yesterday, uh, and uh, we doused it today. Uh, the sock I like because it, it allows you better wind angles, especially when the wind is uh, behind, uh, dead behind you, uh, and not, uh, and the wave action is pretty big, so it, uh, the, the main would jive and the, the downwind rig is jiving. So the, the sock is less likely to jive. But it also has given me fits uh, because it uh, has uh, not so good in squalls. Uh, one squall earlier, uh, the wind shifted substantially, so our course was upwind, and with the Jenniker flying, Genoa could, uh, but the Genoa was uh, pulled out and we couldn't take it to the other side where the, the spinnaker was. So now we're going to bag up the spinnaker and get ready for the final run to Hiva Oa in the Marquesas. So don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Leave a comment or a question and thanks for watching. You can follow us on Facebook at slash Slowboat Sailing, Twitter at Slowboat Sailing. This episode was brought to you by viewers like you and Mantis Anchors.